Hi, thanks for stopping by today. Welcome to PosterCentral.com's video blog. I'm Pete Howard, lifetime Bob Dylan fan, and I have a great one to share with you today. This is a 1965 Bob Dylan concert poster, and it's a tour blank, and this particular stop, as you can see, was in Verm uh, Burlington, Vermont. Uh, interesting, it was in a gymnasium. That's pretty cool, right, Patrick? Jim, that always looks fun. But this is, um, this is a cardboard 14 by 22 inch um, you know, window card, standard Bob Dylan concert poster. Um, it's a tour blank, which is what I really wanted to explain today. Um, well, let me start by saying, actually, the reason I'm particularly fond of this poster, it's got a great Daniel Kramer photograph there, as you can see. And this is the Highway 61 Revisited Tour, which is my favorite Bob album of all time, and a lot of Dylan fans' favorite album of all time. So, you know, boy, <laughs> you know, he's coming off Highway 61 Revisited and bringing it all back home. He's going into Blonde on Blonde. It's like, my goodness, you know, what a, what a prime time of Dylan's career. And interesting to note that he was doing some recording during this tour in between dates. And this, as you can see, of course, October 65. Earlier this month, he went into the um, studio and recorded Can You Please Crawl Out Your Window, which is a quirky song that didn't was not a hit single for him, the follow-up to Positively 4th Street. And he recorded a couple of other quirky fragments as well that um, Dylan Completus will be familiar with from the Biograph box set. We're talking about Jet Pilot and I Want to Be Your Lover. So those were recorded this month as well. But anyway, that's sort of side notes to the poster. I digress, which is so easy to do with someone like Dylan. Um, this, is, um, this is just a, a wonderful, I think I mentioned 14 by 22 inch uh, light cardboard window card. And it's a tour blank. And what that means is the top 80% of the poster with Kramer's photograph was printed in large quantity ahead of time, perhaps in New York or at headquarters or whatever. And then... For each stop of the tour, we can't definitively say for every stop of the tour, but many of the stops, um, I'm, I'm having to guess here and surmise that uh, Dylan's management or the tour promoters would call ahead, the, the national tour promoter, coordinator, booker, whatever, would call ahead to each venue manager or local promoter and say, how many of the window cards do you want? And perhaps they'd order 10 or 20 or 50 or even 100. Um, some estimates range as high as 200 if, if it was a, a lot of outlying areas that the promoter wanted to advertise the show and get people to come. And then they would, th this original, this portion down at the bottom was originally blank white, and then they would just print in the, um, you know, the venue information, the exact date, the time where you can get tickets and everything for all the, uh, for that particular local show. And I'll show you, what, what I like about this too is that what's unusual, it's, it's a small thing, but I love the blueprint. Isn't that nice? Blue printing down there. And I'll show you um, how else this poster was used, which shows you the standard print. Probably the most common was black print. Here's, one from, here's a picture of one from Austin, Texas with black print down in the menu information. And then red was also not too uncommon. They used red. And there's one from Pasadena with red print for the venue information. Maybe I should even get closer. I think it stays in focus if I come in slowly. And there again is the black print for the, um, the Austin, Texas show. And so Dylan uh, was on this tour for about three months. This, this poster was probably used for about three months because the, um, this is October 25, as explained. The earliest one we ha I have seen this poster from was September 24th in Austin, Texas, the very picture I just showed you. And the latest one that we've seen is December 18th in Pasadena, California, which is the other photo I just showed you, which has the red venue info. So those pictures came in serendipitously to serve two different purposes during this little blog. So that's about a three-month span, right? Just a week short of three months. So naturally, and I have, um, I, I collect photographs as well as the poster themselves, themselves, yeah. And so I have, I have photographs of, what, 15 to 20 different of, of this tour blank, different cities, 15 to 20 different cities. You, you're seeing three right now, Patrick, uh, Burlington, Pasadena, and Austin. But I, I was wondering if, um, if the earliest poster we have is September 24th, Austin, does somebody have a poster from, what did he play before then? Forest Hills, New York, one of his first electric gigs, or the Hollywood Bowl? Those both came before the Austin September 24th show. That would be wild to see if somebody has that. And conversely, after the Pasadena gig, December 18th, he, he stayed in L.A. and played the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium. Since I was born in Santa Monica, God, I'd love to know if there was a poster made for the Civic show. So that's kind of, a, you know, that's just obviously a tremendously fun part of this hobby to try to figure out 
how many of these were made, were they made for every single gig, perhaps for some of the gigs they made them and, and none were saved, perhaps for others they saved 50 in a warehouse that weren't used, who knows. I also want to point out something interesting about this particular Dylan Torblank. Most serious poster collectors know about the Art of Rock book, and they have a photo of, of this Torblank used not for a poster but a handbill. That's not uncommon, quite often promoters and local printers would shrink it down for small paper handbills, and as you can see, there's the, um, the poster we've been talking about, I don't know how the light is, for a Dylan show in West Hempstead, New York. But what's really odd is, this show is February of 1966. The next year, Dylan took a month off in January and then resumed his tour with the band, with the Hawks. And of course, I should have mentioned, if, um, I should have mentioned a lot earlier for... Um, dare I say neophytes or whatever, but uh, for this particular phase of Dylan's career, um, he, was, he was coming out and doing an, an acoustic set first, doing 10, 12 songs, whatever, and then taking a break at intermission and coming back with the Hawks and doing a roaring electric set, which the Hawks later turned into the band two or three years later and had a lot of fame on their own and great albums in their own right. Um, but uh, the Hawks, of course, consisting of people like Robbie Robertson on guitar, Levon Helm on drums, Richard Manuel on keyboards, Rick Danko on bass, and uh, it's funny when you go through a list, you always forget the fifth one. Manuel, keyboards, Robbie, Levon. You, you know, you, you know music, <laughs> you know who's in, in the Hawks and the band. Um, so, where was I? Um, so, anyway, in. 66 February through May, Dylan toured with an entirely different poster, which I'll do another blog on sometime later. Um, but why would they save this tour blank and, and use it in February of 66 for a handbill? That might be the only one. I'd be really curious if anybody's seen this, this particular incarnation used in any other form in 1966. And of course, who knows why decisions were made then, and it just makes it all kind of, kind of part of the fun. So there we have it, a Bob Dylan 1965 classic concert poster from his Highway 61 Revisited tour. Uh, legendary artist, great poster, great music, and great fun, that's for sure. Hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for stopping on by.